Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into my channel called That Nurse Nikki. Here I talk about nursing, lifestyle, beauty, feminine health, and just about anything worth talking. In today's topic, I'm going to talk to you about how to study and pass all your class. Number one, I'm going to talk to you about creating a study space. I know I have mentioned this in previous video, and I want to mention it again as five of six of my six of my tips that I use to study and pass all my class in nursing school. So creating a study space basically um, help you to organize your stuff in a familiar area so that you don't have to be moving up and down and getting up like every second that you're trying to study to go get a pencil, a book, a folded leaf or something like that of that sort. So when you're organized, it create the tone that you're ready and you're prepared for whatever it is that you're gonna um, target for the day. So everything was going to be in arm's length reach. So my study area, it has my textbook, my notebook, my pens, my pencils, and paper. I put my phone and do not disturb, and I have motivational music in the background or soft study music that helps to stimulate the brain waves. So that's what I do for creating a study space. You can switch it up a bit and do what makes you comfortable. I'm just telling you what works for me. Number two, you have to know your study style. So before you go ahead and start joining large groups or being by yourself or whatever way you think work, please do the VARC questionnaire. And VARC basically, V-A-R-K, is basically the first letter of all the four learning styles. So V is for visual learner. And these type of learner, what they basically do is they have to like visualize or see the material, watch video, PowerPoints in order for them to like remember and retain the material. That's good for those visual learner. But if you're auditory, you can sit down and listen to a whole lecture. You can listen to audio and then you formulate from there and then you um, um, get your, your learning concept from that. That's for auditory. And for persons, for the R, it's read and write. And basically what this does is for a person who like to read their textbook and then go ahead and write out the notes. That's basically, I think, where I fall most. I like to read my textbook, read whatever notes, and out PowerPoint, and then go ahead and formulate my own notes. Also, for K, it's kinetic. These are person who have to be like on zone, have to be touching the material, have to be like literally playing out skits in their head of whatever chapter so they can understand, or basically just studying by moving up and down they can't sit still and that's all now you don't have to be like particular one study style you could be all of them i find that everything works for me like i'll do a little video i'll watch some youtube channel relating to my topic and then i can listen to to, to our audios as well like record a lecture and then come home listen to it also like i said my big takeaway is read and write because studies have shown that when you read something and then you try to write it down it sticks to you much better in your brain and that way you won't forget the material also i'm a little kinesthetic like in regards to like being practical if i read something and it's not making sense to me i would like to do like a play it out do a skit act like i'm teaching somebody like that works so you don't have to be one so that's for VARP. so you got to know your study style and for me personally I identify that large group does not work for me. I will never join a big study group because I won't be able to concentrate. Concentrate, sorry. I like to like do my own one-on-one -on -one study because I know I'm very in-depth. I like to read and then I like to research and then put it together and see if it makes sense to me before I can say, uh, I don't, being in a group does not allow you to do all of that. So I find my own study technique. Plus I decide that Doing a one-to-one -one study works best for me. I'm trying to incorporate having more people, like maybe one or two people with me, but I find it a little bit um, distracting for me. I don't know, but whatever works for you. If you're a type of person who likes to study in group, go ahead. If you study one-on-one, -on -one, go ahead, but do whatever works best for you. Number three, you're gonna take notes and study in chunk. And when I say take notes, while you're in class, in lecture, if this is your learning style, remember I said some people, they just watch videos or they just basically um, listen to the audio, fine. But for those who have to take notes, read, it's best that you read over your PowerPoints 
and you take notes and do this at the end of each lecture because it is it has been proven that once you're in a lecture and right after you try to like debrief and see what it's all about and take notes everything you would you don't have to like study for 95 percent of the time five percent will be just you looking over stuff come for future tests and this is a technique that i'm trying to incorporate sometimes i do it not all the time i do it but it also helps because the material are not like just fresh in your head when you're ready to go on um, study but basically what i do for me at the end of each class i will um go through take notes but at the end of the week prior before that next class i make sure i go over everything that was said in previous lesson take my own notes and make sure i have a good understanding of what was said so when there's test time and i'm ready to study like say a few days before the exam the material is not um, new to me and that's called swatting so you cannot swat for nursing school you have to know your material and know how to apply it okay so when i say studying chunk it basically means that you're going to take small chunk of notes you're going to break it down just like you're writing an essay come up with your main point and then from your main point you're going to have like sub headings like what is the main point all about and then you're just going to go down and break down your thesis and make sure that whatever you're studying makes sense all right so that's how you study in trunk. You're not gonna sit there, read a whole chapter, and then try to go ahead and write back the whole chapter. However, that is just time consuming and it's not productive and your brain won't remember everything. So you have to de take note of the what's important, like the main points, what the chapter is all about, and what's the takeaway. And then you question yourself, what is it? So this is where I go to my number four, when I say dig deeper. So you have to think critically in nursing school. You can't just see something and say, oh, the boy is brown. And then you're going to say, oh, let me study just like it's a boy is brown. You have to ask yourself question, why, why is he brown? So you're now looking into a deeper understanding of color and pigmentation. So you want to know the reason behind his skin tone and all that. That's how I said, so that's just an example. So you, I know that for some people, like if you have been to like other colleges when you're studying for other academics, you know you can just do memorization and flashcard. This doesn't work for nursing school. You have to read, you have to understand the, the material, and then you have to know how to apply it. Application is key and critical thinking when it comes to nursing school. Number five, you're gonna always apply Maslow theory. And Maslow theory, it states the basic needs for human life. Just in nurse, just like in nursing, your basic needs that you have to fulfill for the patient. So when I say think critically and apply Maslow hierarchy of needs, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna always attack, no, let me not say attack, you're gonna always treat a patient and you're gonna always think about fulfilling their first needs, their, their basic needs first, and then you move up that chain. So basically that's how it is, and basically how you're gonna study in nursing school, think, Critically, think what are the basic needs that needs to fulfill, what makes sense. So you're gonna prioritize. Prioritization is very important. What comes first? What 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 is critical? What can wait for later or for next uh, the hour or two? So this is how you're gonna apply your studying and your understanding of the application of what you have done. And um, number six, do not overthink it or stress it. Guys, I'm not gonna say it's simple. Nursing school is not simple, but if you get the formula and the formula is do your study, your research, and relax and just think critically, you will get it. And you don't have to stress and overstudy and overwork yourself. You need to think, well, don't overthink it and don't stress it. And like I said, you have to apply this to real life situation. Whatever you learn in, um, in your lecture or your simulation lab, try to apply to real life situation to see if it makes sense. For example, I know majority of us, if you're adult, you might have been to the ER or take a family member to ER. You notice that you observe the nurse, like what is it that she do first? So basically, you're gonna go ahead, let's say you're doing um, the nursing process and you know the nursing process um, deals with um, the steps, the five steps of how they um, formulate information and it's like an handoff report. 
It's the ADPI, and the ADPI is an acronym that basically says for the A, the nurse is going to assess, the D, you're going to diagnose, and the P, you're going to plan, and I, you're going to implement based on what you plan, and E, you're going to evaluate if whatever you plan and put in place for the patient, if it works. So that's basically a whole formulation of the care plan. So when you go into the ER, you notice the nurse, they came up to you, they asked you the question, you gave them subjective data, how you're feeling, whatever. They do their own assessment by taking your blood pressure, looking at you and assessing to see overall what could be your the findings. That's basically part of the nursing process and they're assessing you to decide how to diagnose your symptom coming into the ER. Basically, after they have done the diagnosis, they want to plan how they're going to care for you. And doing that, they decide that um, maybe you need to be um, stay a night or two in the hospital, so you get admitted. And then they implement how they're going to care for you, and they start acting up in that care. You remember sometimes you think that you're going to get discharged from the hospital, and then you did not? That's basically when they have to reassess and evaluate you reevaluate you to decide if you go home or not. So basically that's the, the old nursing process. So if you look at it that way and try to say, okay, I learned this in school. Let me see if I understand. Think about a real life situation. Then life becomes easy. I know sometimes things can look foreign on the paper to you and then it doesn't seem like it makes sense, but try to apply a real life situation. And that that is what I do for most of my study in nursing school. And I find that life is much easier and not complicated when I relate it that way and I'm not girlfriend I'm not telling you that you're not gonna um have some few bad days when you think that you don't know stuff because sometimes I feel like I have to dig really deep but it's gonna pay off because I'm not just passing nursing school I am really getting like super good at what I'm doing and the grades are manifesting so this is my sixth tip how you can go ahead and study and pass all your classes for ACIP for nursing school so if this video was helpful please give it a thumbs up please comment down below let me know what else that you want me to go ahead and discuss and i'll see you in the next video